Folks, cold open here. This is Josh. Um, just wanted to apologize about halfway through this podcast. The audio somehow got out of sync, so there's a little bit of weirdness. Um, don't know what happened, and I tried to fix it, and they did my best. So apologies, and hope you enjoy the podcast anyway. Thanks for listening. All right, so I, number one, welcome you, sir. Let's, uh, let's do this proper. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle, the, t- the audio podcast with two guys drinking some sort of alcohol and trying to answer life's questions one bottle at a time. I'm sorry, one drink at a time. Damn. <laughs> really stepping up our game. If we're going a bottle at a time, we're going to drink a whole fucking bottle this episode. All right, Josh. I know, right? Nope, nope. You said it, and now we have I, to. That's a problem because I don't have a bottle in here with me, but uh, I'm Josh. I'm Sean. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in uh, Overland Park. Missouri. No. Kansas. Yep. You get that wrong every time. Kansas. You're right. You're right. I I'm live sorry. on the Kansas side. You're right. Well, you know why I have the in-laws that used to live in Kansas City, Missouri, or they live in Kansas City, Missouri now, but they used to live in Overland Park. And so I, I uh, yeah. Anywho. It's okay. The I, point is, to, I also used to live in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. The first time I was we're not, here. Okay. So we're not in the same place is what I'm saying. Correct. But if you're listening to this, chances are good. You're a patron on Patreon for Room 6. Thank you very much. Um, your support actually helps me help the local music scene here in Vegas and uh, elsewhere to um, hopefully, you know, get get the promotion and the showcasing they need. Uh, it, feel free to go to room6.shop and check out some merch. And also there's a link there for the YouTube channel and you can, you know, watch the stuff I do. That being said. The stuff you do being interviews with local talent, going to shows, reviewing venues, important stuff for these. local musicians, important stuff for local fans if you like your hometown or you like where you live you should be supporting it and you do a great job with that thank you and i did not pay him to be my hype man correct yep just a complimentary blowjob every season wow and so that's what you're in for is that kind of humor right there but also if you have a question we actually do have a question today uh, this month, this is a monthly podcast where we, it's no filter, no editing other than, you know, like I fade it in, I fade it out. And unless we have some sort of weird audio glitch or whatever, um, I leave it all in and it's about an hour and we, we hope that you enjoy. So strap in, we're going to have a good time. Um, how, how are you doing? Are you getting any sleep, man? I know you haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately. Uh, I'm w- working on it. <laughs> no is the answer, but I'm working on it. Working. How do you work on getting sleep? So, um, drugs. I'm I've been kidding. I've been going through some uh, therapy, and it turns oh. out that I suffer from time blindness. And if you don't know what okay. that is, it is the feeling of when you get into midday and you go, "Jesus, it's only this time," or "It's my God, it's this time already." It, that's time blindness. I that has been me. I've lost like weeks to that. I've lost months to that. So I am trying to be more conscious of where and when I do things. So a lot of that, um, a lot of that rebuilding of my schedule required me to write out all of my responsibilities that I have to do every day. And Jesus is it a lot. You don't realize, right? Yeah, you don't realize how much shit you have to do and how. Uh, so what I. So thank you to my therapist. Uh, she recommended I get a um, a whiteboard schedule that's set out for a month. And it's, <laughs> I have one on the wall right here oh, for man. all the interviews. <laughs> oh, man. I, I should have gotten one years ago. I should have been doing this fucking years ago. So now what I'm doing is I am writing out all of the things I have to do. And since they're all written out, I'm spreading them out amongst my days. And I'm planning out a month. I have to really be conscious of getting into, like, getting myself into ready for bed. And I don't mean, you know, take a shower and, you know, listen to calm music. Like, I have to be done with my day at 5 o'clock. I got to shut everything down. I can't work past it because I am also kind of... I can't separate my home life from my work life. And you work for yourself, so that's definitely a, a problem. And I'm actually really proud of you and really happy to hear this because this is all good stuff that I never would have thought to suggest to you. 
She's a fucking miracle worker, man. I I owe her a lot. Uh, but what's happened is I've I'm working on a schedule, so a weekly schedule, and part of that weekly schedule is planning for naps and sleep and rest and recovery, all the stuff I don't do well, uh, or I'm out. I'm sorry, not that I don't do well. I'm out of practice at doing them consistently. So that's what I'm working on currently. Uh, it's harder than it sounds. Right. So, yeah, I'm trying to get more sleep, but we, you know, with the, with the way our household runs between uh, my significant other having to go to work and, you know, then I have to take care of the house while she's gone. It, it's tricky. And I have to, for as much as I want to be scheduled and regimented and disciplined, I do also have to maintain that sense of flexibility. Definitely. It, it's, you know, the, the old saying is, if you want to, you know, make God laugh, tell him your plans. If you want to, you know, if you want to like feel frustrated, plan out your day and, and try to follow it. It's things are going to happen, especially when you get other people involved in your life. Yeah, it is. It, the more people you have in your life, the harder it is to maintain all those schedules. Like I had, I'm, I'm yep. seeing a friend on Saturday and we had to plan this five weeks in advance. Yep. that's And that's just because I want to hang out with my buddy and, you know, maybe play some music and smoke and chill. Like just hang out. Right. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you happen to be Anywhere near the Overland Park, Kansas area, and you want to learn some music, uh, Sean is actually a music teacher. Thank you. You teach, he teaches drums, piano, singing, guitar, uh, music theory. Do you teach any of that? Uh, I do teach. I mean, just as part of the. I teach music theory. Uh, I teach oral training. I teach ear training um, and ukulele as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah, man. I even have to take up, I had to take up uh, ukulele to kind of bolster my my guitar center resume. So I do teach at guitar center huh. out of guitar center, but I also teach independently and I teach privately through my own studio that I have in downtown Kansas city off of uh, Truman. So if you, how's that coming along by the way, man, is it looking fucking fire? Oh, it's so <laughs> good. It's so good. I will have, can't wait to see it whenever tomorrow I visit. Cause I'm going to do uh, a cleaning round tomorrow and and uh, try and get some office furniture in there. But it's looking bitchin'. And I am so fucking happy with it, man. It, it was a long time. It was over a year of an empty space with, my, with some drums in it. Now it right. feels like an actual studio and office. Nice. And it's just, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just been a metamorphosis. Awesome. Getting back to the sleeping thing real quick. I personally, I'm going to, I'm going to kvetch a little bit. I, Lately, I've been waking up feeling like I was like I lost a wrestling match. You know, like I wake up and it feels like I was doing bench presses all night. It's which is it's a very particular like what am I doing? Is it muscle soreness? Just, like you're like you've been tense all yeah. night? Yeah, like by the time I drop the kid off at school in the morning, which is I'm back to that now. Uh, I I'm fine, but it's really weird to wake up feeling like did I work out in my sleep and just miss it? Because uh, I don't see the benefits, and you know, am I am I just fighting the covers? That I'm asking my wife, like, am I tossing and turning? Like, I don't know. I'm sleeping. I don't know. So I'm obviously not waking her up, and it's the weirdest thing. I haven't been working out. I, I took a couple weeks off because of it. I'm like, I don't want to make it worse. You know, I don't want to. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, one thing I noticed is that for some somewhere along the line, I tweaked my left trapezoid muscle like it's just you know it always feels yeah it always feels like i was trying to pop my neck and just you know eh. and and uh I, I tweaked it and i was sleeping on the same pillow which normally is perfectly fine but it, it's a little bit elevated and i always end up on my left side on my uh, and that's and i would wake up just feeling like Ugh. and I, I finally figured it out i was like oh let me go to a flatter pillow and i am noticing now that it seems to be evening out and, and being less uh, painful, but uh, shoot, it's just weird. Like any in the weird dreams, like I dreamed I was a muffler. I woke up exhausted. That's cute. Was thank that you, thank you. was that, that was whole, a long setup? <laughs> was that whole story 
just for that punchline, or are you actually no. sore when you sore when you wake up? No, the the whole story story is true, okay. and, except for the muffler bit. Okay, there we go. Got it. Dad there jokes. I've got them. Golf clap. That's not me masturbating very quickly. Wow. Well, it's you an audio podcast. They don't fucking know. Yeah, that's true. Besides, if, it, if, if if that was the case, you'd be like. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Bad, baby, bad. Anyway. Ah, uh, like a roaring applause. Yeah, right. But this is Two Brains, One Bottle, and we each have a bottle that we're, we're drinking from. What do from, you have, sir? I'm drinking whole bottle. in my branded Room 6 mug. You're drinking out of a Glen Cairn like a proper gentleman. Uh, it's because I'm drinking scotch. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking... I'm actually drinking rum for once. Yeah. You're saying it was spicy, it was warm. Yeah, um, well, a while ago... Like a couple Christmases ago, I think, or for birthday or whatever. Uh, on, on, on my Rube 6 YouTube channel, part of what I do is I, re- I review whiskeys. It's an excuse to try new whiskeys. And why not? It helps make the music sound better. And I was given a bottle of Captain Morgan's Cannonball Blast by my in-laws, who know that I review whiskeys. I don't review r- rums. But I, I did. I tried it every single way that you could have it. And turns out that the way they market it is as a cold shot, and damn it, if it isn't a good cold shot, they no longer make it. So when I went to get some more, uh, our, our 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 hookup Sandra at uh, Total Wine said, "Hey, let's go look and see what we can find." And she and she found Hog Bay, which is a, a Caribbean black rum, a little a little bit spicier, and I dig it. Like I'm feeling very warm and a general love for all mankind right now. Are you a big fan of the black rums? I didn't know. I don't know. I, this one I am. So back in my heavily drinking days, and uh, if Rum you and do choke. know, if you do know me personally, yeah, I was much worse before now. Oh, I, I remember the glasses. So <laughs> I would drink pints of rum and coke that were mixed one to one, no ice. I remember. Boy, fucking howdy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there are some really delicious black rums out there. Was my was my sentiment was if you are liking the black rums, I have a lot of opinions on rum. I've been right. through a well, lot so of far, rums. I mean, oh, go ahead. I've just I was just saying I've been through a lot of rums. Right. Well, um, Sandra being Sandra, she's like, we don't have one of these open. You want to go taste it? Yes, ma'am. So I tasted it, warm, you know, like right out of the bottle in a little plastic tasting cup. And, uh, and it was it's like, it's very layered, and it, but of course I like it. It's a cold shot. So it's cold. It's currently on a whiskey ice ball. Thank you very much. And, uh, so that mutes the high and the low notes, but I'm still getting lots of, lots of notes, various, um, when I say spices, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of this, the baking spices, but also I get, uh, a lot of the warming spices. Okay. You, you, would use, you would use in more savory applications. I want to say cardamom is in there, but okay. at this point, I've, I've had enough to where my tongue is kind of numb. <laughs> so, uh, warming spices, warming spices being like uh, clove, star anise. Yeah, clove. Uh, that's the one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, nutmeg typically is in there as well. Like, mm-hmm. those are all things that warm you from the inside out. Very much so. Like, I, this makes me feel like I, I wish it was winter, which mm. I never wish it was winter. So, just so I could, you know, be warm. But uh, what are you drinking, sir? I'm drinking uh, Johnny Walker Green Label. You you said you were going to get that. I, How was it? You know what, man? I spoke it into existence. <laughs> uh, I, I manifested it, it. I haven't tried it yet. This is the this is the, it's my maiden voyage with it. What do you got? What's on the nose? Lots of smoke. Huh. I never think of smoke with Johnny Walker. Uh, it's, this is... Uh, a particularly smoky varietal. Um, this is a blend of Talisker, Linkwood, Kragenmore, and Colila. Gesundheit. So yeah, just smoke, honey. You don't have to call me honey. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. Big iodine note. This is a really good example of that medicinal rubber kind of iodine smoke in the back of the palate. Smoke in a pancake? But damn, that's fucking good. 
some well, good. Mo- some you bought malt. a whole bottle of it, right? Yeah, I bought a whole bottle. Yeah, no, no, uh, no samplers or, or mini bottles or fifty. No, no, no fucking minis. No, I appreciate minis as gifts because I know how expensive this shit gets. So yeah. I will never turn down minis. I fucking I value them just like I do the big bottles. But if I'm buying for myself. Unless it's something I'm really skeptical of, I just get the whole bottle. Because right. I'd, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather make the investment and then find something about it that I enjoy. And then, you know, if I don't like it straight, I'll build it into a cocktail. Oh, by the way, um, l- the listeners don't know this, but we're actually talking to each other via Microsoft Teams. It's a, We're trying this out. It seems to be pretty good working on so far. However, I forgot to tell you. Uh, it says there's a 60 minute time limit. Oh shit! Okay. So, so what we may have to like restart the meeting again, like starting the meeting. We'll see what happens. It may just say, we can get this "Hey, done your, unless your time limit's almost up." Well, it may be it may be like Zoom used to be, where it would be like, "Hey, your time limit's almost up, but you can keep going if you want." Right. Or it may just shut off. So we'll see. Okay. Um, anywho, uh, we have a question. Question time. Question. And if you have a question or something you want us to talk about. Go ahead and email two brains one bottle at gmail.com. That's the number two and the number one. So the number two brains, the number one bottle. That's duplicate bottles and uno brain. No, wait. Duplicate brains and, <laughs> and one bottle at gmail.com. Two Got brains, cool. one bottle, the number two brains, the number one bottle at gmail.com. Exactly. Also, in the description of this video will be uh, you know links and stuff to how to contact us. Chuck asks, this has bugged me for years. If a vampire bites a zombie, does the zombie become a vampire or does the vampire become a zombie? Uh, a zo- I think it's a, a vampire it doesn't, pretty straightforward to me. Zombie doesn't bite, or a vampire doesn't bite a zombie. That's plain and simple. It, um, if they did. They, they don't. That's the whole point. But if they did. I understand it's an if question, and I understand, but what I'm saying is the fundamentals don't work because vampires want good quality blood. Zombies have coagulated dead, not moving blood. And actually, if you go into the folklore of vampires, dead man's blood will poison vampires. That is very true. My thing is, here's what my where my brain went immediately was, I think it depends who bites who. I, and and also, what zombie. kind of zombie are we talking about? Are we talking yeah, like a virus-based but, zombie? Because then I can see it jumping. Right, but here's my thinking. Uh, again, like in a world, in a world, uh, in a world where a vampire would bite a zombie, and a zombie could become a vampire, and vice versa. If a zombie bites a vampire, then the vampire becomes a zombie. But if a vampire bites a zombie, then the zombie becomes a vampire. Assuming that all that other stuff was wasn't a factor. Does that make sense? It, what you're saying makes sense. I just fundamentally disagree with it. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I understand saying, that. I'm not trying like to Chuck- say that I'm fucking... I'm the only one that's right. It's just... It's not... Um, I just would say it, it doesn't work that way, but if it did, we'd have a fucking mess on our hands when the werewolves came to town. See, I'd be more into... <laughs> I'd be more into, like, a vampire that can turn into a werewolf because now we're fucking talking now we're talking about right, right. transformations and shit and i'm into that so chuck i feel like the answer to your question is it's a non-question it it, it wouldn't happen uh a zombie bite well, no, a, zo- a zombie could bite a vampire if a vampire for some reason was slow enough or injured enough the zombie would catch it but even then would the zombie go after the vampire it's undead Right, you would think they would. You would think that the vampires would just enslave the zombies and use them as labor and weapons. Right, but again, what type of zombie are we talking about? Are we talking about the kind that it? Ha- it's not going after brains. It's going after any living thing. But a vampire is not still, living. A vampire is right. dead. Exactly. Well, right. So would that just, so would that be fed. its camouflage? Right, but what if a vampire just fed? So it's it, it does have blood coursing through it. Or we know the blood's just in its stomach? I don't know. So, Chuck, I, I hope that that... I know that didn't answer what you were hoping, I but it's a non-question, really. 
But speaking of blood, this leads me to a weird science fact. Okay. Did you just hear a noise? What kind of noise? I just got an email noise? No. Okay, cool. Um, I just got an message. I just got a message. All right. Um, mm-hmm, let me check mm-hmm, this out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wonder who it's from. Interesting. No. Uh, okay, so. Makes for great podcast. Checking your email. Yeah, right? Quality content. So, so <laughs> speaking of blood, the weird science fact is that camels can actually change their blood. Like They can change the nature of their blood. They used to be thought that the big hump or humps stored water, and that's not true. Okay. What they can actually... The main issue with dehydration for most mammals, because, you know, camels like the desert. Camels gonna camel. Uh, the main issue for, with dehydration is that the blood plasma volume decreases, and it can it can become, like, thick and mm-hmm. gluggy, is, yeah. is the scientific term. <laughs> and the heart has to work much harder to right. process it. But with camels, they manage to actually... Their blood levels somehow stay the same at the expense of other body tissues, and um, their red blood cells still move smoothly. And it, apparently, though, like that translates into they have very dry feces, and when they drink, they take they can drink up to fifty seven liters. Holy shit! Yeah. So that's it, how much rum I was drinking. Picture, in a two <laughs> picture a two liter bottle. Picture a two liter bottle of Coke or something. That's Almost 30 of them <laughs> and, at, at one sitting. They can drink up to 57 liters in one sitting. So they do store the water, but it's absorbed super rapidly to keep the blood flowing. All right. And so you know, do you know what's in a camel's hump? Do I know what's in a camel's hump? Yeah. Uh, I would guess uh, tissue, muscle. Nope. Fat. Good old fat. It's a food reserve. Oh, so just like humans, they got a fat hump. Pretty much, yeah. I, and, and I it rely does, on my my torso. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a layer of courtesy fat for you. If I get too ripped, <laughs> uh, it's one that uh, the, the the fat in the hump actually uh, supplies the animal with some water. Mm. Um, okay, yeah, but it's not. It, yeah, it used to be thought like they just store the water in the hump. No, no. Uh, so there you go. Um, today we learned uh, in. No, now it's talking about kangaroo rats. But, yeah. So, what is your... I wanted to ask you... What is your favorite land animal? And why? Favorite land animal. And don't say your girlfriend. I think if we said, like, of the day, because I don't I don't really think about this question ever. Um, my favorite... I mean, I got. I, I I feel it'd be cliche to say cats. But what kind of cat? Oh, Maine Coon. I've well, always but like domesticated cats. Yeah, yeah. I've always okay. yeah. But a Maine Coon is a domesticated cat. It's just fucking huge. Wait, is that the one that looks like, like those Egyptian cats? That no, no, no. A Maine Coon is a very. Uh, it almost looks like a wild cat. But on, it's very long. How do you spell Maine Coon? M A I N E, Maine, and then yeah. Coon, C O O N. Is it one word or two? Oh, I'm seeing it both ways. Maine Coon cat. Oh. Oh, yeah, so they got the ears. Yeah, the wild ears. Yeah. They look like, they look, the head looks like Batman. <laughs> yeah, Catman. I'm Catman. Right on. Hey, speaking of whiskey. What is what hold on? What is your favorite land animal? Ah well, I should say something like my kid or you know, something cheesy like that. But no, my favorite land animal. I'm not gonna say a dog. I'm certainly not gonna say cat. <sighs> Cause I don't own a cat, I own we own a dog. Uh kind of. You know, my favorite land animal? Komodo dragon. Okay. Yeah, reptile. Pretty cool. And it's it has nothing to do with anything but cool factor. They certainly would be a 
pain to maintain or to, to, to you know, own. You get never, it's just the feeding alone. They eat a lot of meat. And um, they apparently have really stinky poop. Oh. Like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. If you lived and, uh, on all meat, you would too. Their saliva is apparently acidic. So you're not going to be going in for snuggles. And, of course, reptiles in general can carry salmonella. So, yeah. Um, don't be, like, putting your bread starter dough in to proof or, or anything in, in a snake cage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I really needed that advice. <laughs> How did yeah, you I know I was going to do that tomorrow? Yeah, right. Um, in... I just... Something about... I don't know what. I think what it is is that they're not too fast. I I can still get away from them, but also, I don't want like um, a tiger. You know, I, I I when I think of what's my favorite land animal, it's what my, what would be my favorite land animal to have around. But again, I said I wouldn't want to own one because it'd be a nightmare. Because um, it spits acid. Land animal. I feel like I'm going to change my mind, actually. I feel like I'm going to backpedal and go with, um, you know what? I'm going to go with an ocelot. And just go with that. Like, just cute enough, just self-sufficient enough. Uh, they're not like baboons or something that's going to attack you. Jesus, man. Because... Monkeys are fucking scary. Yeah, orangutans. Oh, Dude, my God. they're so strong. Holy shit. There was, yeah, a, you wanted to tear... there was a video going around of, his, of someone fucking with an orangutan, like, mm -hmm. messing around the cage, and it grabbed his arm, pulled him into the cage, and snapped that thing like a twig. Jesus. Yeah, it's like, it's like that trope in a, in a video, or, a, I mean, a, sorry, a, a, a movie or a TV show where the... The psycho killer inmate or whatever is getting taunted by a guard and gets a little too close. Yep. And suddenly that guard is getting slammed head first into the bars. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Um. Hey, Sean. You know what time it is? It's time for weird news. It's time for weird news. Weird news. Bounce weird news on the internet. Yeah. Uh, pendant, patent pending trademark. Anyway, you and I have. Not a unicorn, but we have a mulligan. No, not a mulligan. A uh, MacGuffin that we need to go hunt for. Okay. And the problem is it requires a road trip to New Hampshire. I don't see what's wrong with that. I'd love going to new places. I've never been to New Hampshire. If you're a listener from New Hampshire, hello. I didn't say that going to New Hampshire is the problem, but it just means we can't like go to the store and okay. get it. Because there is a New Hampshire whiskey distillery. Okay. That's making making whiskey out of an invasive species of crab. You should see his face right now, listener. Uh, crab each bottle, whiskey? Each, yeah, they have an invasive species of green crab. They're calling the whiskey Crab Trapper. And it's crab-flavored whiskey. It's uh, Each bottle uses about one pound of green crabs. And I I like crab. I, I, I yeah. I don't. I do not like crab. Well, that's my dog. My, my kid loves crab. I don't know. Like, oh, man. Well, okay. So obviously they're not using like it's not like chunks of crab floating around in it. They use crab stock that's distilled using a vacuum still, which I thought was interesting. They, they throw mustard seed, coriander, and cinnamon in there, so they're making like a savory whiskey. Okay. It's br it's briny and a, it's a. Br they literally market it as it's a better a briny and better fireball. I'm like, that's not <laughs> I don't win. I don't want that. That doesn't <laughs> like that description doesn't make me interested in it. Yeah. Um But I it, it it's gotta fall under the umbrella of I'll try anything once and then I'll try it again sober. Like, I wouldn't want to buy a bottle, but if somebody offered me a shot of it, or not a shot, but, you know, a taste of it, I'd be like, okay. I, I, I personally have drunk uh, Cobra wine from Vietnam, and it was bottled the year I was born, in 1972. And let me tell you, it tasted like it hated me. 
Um, it, it, it literally, there was a cobra in a bottle. The Vietnamese right now. And it's just a thing. Apparently it's like aphrodisiac or whatever. Uh, interesting story about them. They showed up on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, from Europe about 200 years ago in ballast water aboard ships from Europe. And they spread across the coast and they are vicious, annihilating any creature that dares cross their path, including each other. Whoa. Uh, they're very hard. Yeah, they're, 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 they don't fuck around. They're very hardy, um, live in a wide range of temperatures and salinities. That's interesting. They can survive out of the water for long periods of time and produce an abundance of offspring. Oh, good, the nightmare. All that's left is, do they fly? <laughs> you know? Uh, sorry about the background noise. Uh, we have a printer in, in the room where I'm at, and it's printing. But that's okay, because it's an audio podcast, so hang in there. Um, what was the other thing? I'm trying to get a better fireball. Who are you? Oh, I was going to say, um, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't mind tasting it once and never ever tasting it again. I feel like it's a, it's a bet. You know? I agree with you, and that sounds like something maybe better suited for, like, doing a distillery tour and then having a dram of that after the tour, because then I don't, like, I don't want to feel guilty for buying a whole bottle, drinking it once, and going, this tastes like shit. Right. But I, but if I'm there, and I have, and it's part of the experience, and... You should look at the bottle. The bottle's kind of cool, actually. I'm, I'm down for it. But what I'm saying is if I if I can build it into the experience, I will probably like it better. Or at least I can, right. you know, fucking fool myself. My stupid lizard brain, I can fool that into thinking I like it better. But And if I do like it better, then I would get a bottle of it and enjoy it. But I would feel right. guilty buying a whole bottle and then not liking it. You know, the buyer's remorse kind of scares me away from the possibility. Well, something tells me you can't just, you know, taste it. Like, you have to buy the bottle. But House of Tamworth, Green Crab, Red Whiskey. Yeah, that's exactly what it says in the tin. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting about it was they the same distillery has messed around with unusual flavors in the past. They created a roasted turkey-flavored whiskey. Well, that's worth getting, so you can drink it at Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving only. You know what? I would, I would try it with some with a bowl of stuffing. <laughs> you know how you eat leftover stuffing? That's what you do after Thanksgiving. You're like, I want some stuffing. I don't want anything else. Just want some stuffing. But uh, the company they've also produced eau de musk using the oil extract from the castor gland of the North American beaver to flavor the whiskey. What is wrong with these people? See, this is. Now, the more you're going into this stuff, the more my former vegan brain keeps going, the animals didn't consent to that. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody consented consent to that, but like, yeah. Like, that's not, it's not necessary at that point, you know? Right. But I'm, and maybe it's just because I spent so long with that frame of, frame of mindset, but it's, it, that in and of itself is kind of a turnoff. Oh, yeah, but, oh, this, this whole thing is like, turn off. But, like, how, um, what do you, like, how are you harvesting that shit? Right. With, hey, without, Matt, uh, sorry. Without Matt, hurting, hurting the animal. Like, or, you hey, know. Hey, hey. Sean, Sean uh, real, real, quick, real quick, go ahead and go pause your audio. audio. Okay. Okay. Listener, sorry if we uh, dropped out there for a second. Uh, Listener, sorry if we uh, dropped out there for a second. Uh, just wanted to so let the printing finish. So the printer is done. The printer is quiet. And I have one more fact about the whiskey made from green crabs. It just sounds so wrong. God, it's just so, it just sounds so wrong. But there's a reason why they're doing this. Do you remember uh, the grasshopper thing that happened in Las Vegas? So, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Las Vegas, for whatever reason, had a basically like a, a grasshopper swarm come through. I won't call it a plague, but it was... And pretty pretty impressive. Place, um, pie, and a local said, pizza place, Evil Pie, said, Bet, fam, we're going to do something, said, about, this. Fam, do something about, grasshopper about this. Pizzas. And they started making, now, they selling grasshopper, grasshopper, grasshopper pizzas. They now, they sourced, grasshopper they sourced the grasshoppers from Mexico because they had to be all, like, you know, properly FDA approved and everything. But it was a it was a really funny riff. So this is striking me as, we have this huge problem with green crabs. What are we going to do about it? Now, the difference with this place is... They're actually somebody taking the actual green crabs, apparently, or, or somebody is, and distilling it down. But here's what you know, here's what the brain root the problem is. The you know, mussels, the bivalves. Each green crab can eat about forty mussels a day. 
What? Just that, one. Yeah. You multiply that. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's just taking it's, take, it's taking out the whole muscle for a little system. crab. Yeah. So the, the quote is. You multiply yeah. That by so a the, the quote is. No you multiply that by a bazillion and, and you have no more clams. Yeah. And for the for but, New Hampshire, uh, I mean. There's a picture here yeah. where someone's holding but, uh, one of these green crabs. I, there's a picture here where someone's holding one of these green crabs. And honestly, the whole thing is barely bigger than your hand. So it's it's not. I mean, it's it's crazy that they can eat forty muscles <laughs> in a day. Um, I don't even so, work there you go. forty muscles um, in a day. From yeah, like like I can't yeah, like like I can't even competitive eaters can't handle forty muscles. Yeah, that's not true. They can probably do that. Yeah, Maybe Yoshi could do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a, that's a shout out to you, Star uh, Trek fans. Out last there. thing I have for uh, us. Yes. Yeah. 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 All, all, we all of our Star Trek fans. Anyway. <laughs> yes, all those Star Trek alcoholics. Yes, all those we got listening to the Star Wars fans. fans. <laughs> there you go, Trekkies, my dear boy. They're called Trekkies. There you go, uh, Trekkies, so, my dear boy. They're called from, Trekkies. Uh, from weird so, news, we go to from really uh, from weird news, we go to Florida really man. weird news. Ah, to Florida man, ah, the fount of oh, all good things. things. All hilarious things. Florida, things. Florida man, are you ready for this, Senor? Yes. Florida man asks police, asks police to test his meth for authenticity. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So Thomas Eugene he, Colucci of Thomas Hill, Eugene Colucci of Spring Hill called the sheriff's office, asking, uh, he, called he, the sheriff's like office asking uh, he he didn't even like this swing by. Like he asked him on this the phone. This wasn't like an in person thing. He called him. Could you he test my meth? I've recently purchased. He. He said, I'm an experienced drug user and believed that he'd been sold bath salts instead of meth. Wow. Fuck. I would want that wow. shit tested too. But also, don't do meth. Don't, there, yeah, don't, there, don't do there are so many don't, better yeah, drugs don't, out don't there than that. meth. And bath salts? Oh, Christ. No thanks. I don't need to eat anybody's face. Well, you know what Good Guy Colucci said? He wanted the police well, to you know what? Good Guy Colucci said he wanted the police to test the meth so others wouldn't buy fake meth from the person who sold it to him. Uh, they tested the substance, found that it was in fact so, yeah, it was math. Him, so yeah, it was math. They arrested him, took him to a hospital for medical evaluation before taking him to the detention uh, center. Uh, oh, only seven thousand dollars bond on, uh, charges, of bond on of charges of possession of methamphetamine. Yeah, yeah typically if you're doing math, you don't have an extra seven thousand. It's around. just one of those. Yeah, it's just one of those. I'm yeah, sorry, it's just one of those. I'm sorry, what did you say? You know, wait, wait, can you get a can we get a trace? Can we get a trace? I just thought it was phony. Do you have any uh, Florida man or Florida I, woman? I don't have any good, jokes, good, uh, jokes, but I did see that I did see that a certain Florida man had his home raided by the FBI. Uh oh, what do you do? Uh -oh, Stole you do? documents, classified documents. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that oh. Florida man. There we go. Oh uh, yes, that Florida man. Yeah, fuck that guy. She doing child. Uh, Hope he goes to jail for a long, know. long time. Right. Oh man. Right. Um, there's a website called. Oh Panda. man. Um, there's a website called Panda Bored Panda. As in a panda who was bored. And they have an article here. Sixty times Florida man did something so crazy we had to read the headings twice. Now we're not going to get into all of them. We should do. We should do but, that on a special Florida man episode. Possibly yes. Sixty. Sixty headlines in sixty minutes. Number one sounds like a. Called, sounds like. Hey. Two, yeah. There you go. Hey. All right, then I won't say this. There you go. There you go, guys. All right, then just, I won't say this. Just got you a whole nother episode. You're welcome. Wow. All right. The reason well, to get up wow. tomorrow. All right. Well, then. With, well, with that, I think we're going to say goodbye. Because this, uh, with that, I think we're going to say goodbye because this uh, this uh, team's meeting time, is going to run out. But in the meantime, thank you for thank listening you for to Two Brains, One Bottle. Uh, thank you for being a supporter. Uh, and watching, also, you know, hopefully, thank you for watching what I do over on Room 6. Um, yeah, if you have anything you want us to, you know, talk about or, or answer, two brains one bottle at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, remember to be amazing, and I guess we'll check, we'll check you out next time on two brains one bottle. Say goodbye, Sean.